Good evening, uh, Facebook Live number two. Uh, just wanted to thank you for all the messages and the questions from the last talk I did. Um, obviously showed a lot of interest in what I've been doing, um, what I've dealt with in my life. Um, so I'd just like to expand on that a lot more. A lot of people were asking um, with the whole mental health issue, they don't feel as though necessarily they have mental health issues. Um, but they, they feel as though something's holding them back, um, so they wouldn't necessarily class themselves as having a mental illness, um, but they're well aware that something isn't, isn't right. Um, that's something that really resonated with me, and I think that on, on reflection, I was doing a lot of thinking around where, where people are actually struggling, and one of the big things that came up for me w was fear. Um, and fear is such a such a broad subject. It can affect you in so many different ways. Um, now, in the field and in Acorn to Oak Training School, we say that fear is just false evidence appearing real. So it's something that our brain does naturally. So when a situation comes up, or we we may be sitting there and thinking about an opportunity, um, and the, our brain will question it or will. What if that happens? And what if that happens? And these could be good things. These could be bad things. Fear can work in 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 a very versatile way. You can actually just be just as fearful of su success as you are at failure. Um, in my life, I've experienced sort of both. Doing a lot of personal development work, you you dig in and really work out what kind of sort of thought patterns you have and what what behaviours you had. Um, and what led you to have those thoughts and behaviours, um, which is very much why I think is relevant with a lot of people that we're viewing. Um, so I think it, it, fear is it affects everybody, and if it hasn't affected you up until now, it's something you'll always you'll experience it in your life. Um, we stop ourselves doing things, and we tell ourselves and keep ourselves safe and small. Because actually we're scared of being, putting ourselves out there, of, of, of succeeding, of actually gaining something that we haven't already got. Now, that just sounds crazy. Because why, why would we want to hold ourselves back? Why would we not want to have all the things we dreamed of as children? Now, obviously, with childhood dreams, we, we all had some that are maybe unrealistic. I'm now 37 and I'm unlikely to be an astronaut so that's one dream I'm probably going to have to sit on however a lot of the other things that I told myself I want I'd like to experience as a kid through my 20s and uh, obviously I had dealings with depression I also had dealings with addiction um, because I was using things to counteract the depression um, but the fear was always there and it was the fear that I wasn't that I wasn't good enough, and the fear that I couldn't couldn't succeed in something. Um, and actually, when we the thing that stops us is ourselves. And if we don't do anything, well, how do we expect anything to change? Einstein's one of my good quotes is um, the definition of insanity is doing the same thing and expecting a different result. So how many of you sitting there would like to make a change in your life, you don't quite know how, but are going to sit, decide to do something about it? And how many of you are going to sit there and just say, well, I, I won't do it because of this, and well, it's all right for them because of this, or whatever the, whatever the story, whatever the, the reason is. Um, and remember that when, when you're in your mind and when you're using your brain, your brain is a tool of, it rationalises situations. So it will give you the pros and the cons in a very, very quick way. It analyses a situation. But it's very basic. So it will give you a good guide of something. However, it doesn't, it doesn't provide any more than that. So it could provide ten reasons as why not to do something. However, it could give you one reason why, actually, this could be the one thing that changes your life. So how many people out there have thought about starting a business? but thought, I don't have the knowledge in business. So you might have the skills, it could be an arty type business, so you've got the art skills, but then you don't know how to put that into a business. So 
you just stay as an artist and you just stay small rather than taking the step to start a business and, and don't buy into the fear and, and not, not buy into the uh, rationalisations within your mind um, and actually go for it. Um, many of the entrepreneurs and, and Jim Carrey's a great celebrity um, who says that if you, if, you, if you don't buy into fear and you visualise what you want and you, and you go for it, sure there's going to be hurdles and sure there's going to be things that get in your way but these are just lessons that come from life and actually these are the things that we can learn from. If something doesn't necessarily work the first time, you learn and move on and you can make something worth work second, third time, whatever it be. But the fact is that it, it's making the first step and it's not, not allowing the fear to, to pull you in. Um, I look at society in general these days and how many of my women friends would leave the house without makeup on? and not worry, and not be in fear. A lot of them would say, actually, makeup doesn't make a difference. And that's great, because they have that sort of um, feeling within self where they're happy. Whereas a lot of fears can be around us not being happy within ourselves. So you have, unfortunately, men do it these days as well, but you have people that are pretty much putting a mask on in the morning because they don't want people to see who they truly are. And actually the beauty comes from the inside. You ask any real man, do you prefer a woman with makeup or do you prefer a woman without makeup? They'll tell you without, because you can see they're a true person. Whereas a lot of women are, 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 are craving to find that, but actually they'll never find that because they're making themselves seem like something else. So. Inside they're very genuine, but on the outside all the guy will see is the mask. And I'm sure a lot of women can say the same thing. A lot of blokes will put on a bravado and act a certain way because they want to impress. They, they've got to be this certain thing that women crave. When actually they're being the complete opposite from what women really want. And that's fear. It's the fear that you can't be yourself and do everything actually that you would like to do. Um, and it's it come up in many parts of my life, and it's just it's shocking how how far out it goes and into how many different parts of your life it it can affect just from something you were maybe told as a child, like you weren't good enough or something has caused you to think that you're not good enough. So every time you think about doing something or you have a, a, a like a calling to sort of start a business or whatever, the first thing that comes in is oh, but I can't do that because of what they said, or I can't do that because society says that's not possible, or society says we can't do that. Well, actually, sod them. They're not, they're not the important people in your life. The most important person in your life is you. Everybody else comes second. And if you disagree, I, I understand that different people have different opinions, but in my view... To give my family the best, to give my friends the best, and to give my workmates the best version of myself, I have to put myself first. So I work on myself, I put myself first, and then I can be there 100% for them if and when they may need me. Um, and I think it's really important to, to get that across that so many people are worried about caring about themselves and they say oh well that, that's selfish we should we should we should help others and all that and it's kind of like yes I totally agree with that but if you can't help yourself how can you expect to help others um, and it, it it comes up a lot um, people sort of say oh well I've, I, do, I do this behavior because it makes them happy and I, I, I do this because it makes them happy and it's kind of like have you ever stopped to think all the time you're doing these things to make everyone else happy that you're not making yourself happy. So if you spend all the time that you spend helping others on yourself, I guarantee you, you'd have a happier life. Um, I have many, many friends and many uh, colleagues along the pathway, the same personal development pathway that I've chosen with Acorn to Oak and using breath work as the main tool. Um, and we're all from different walks of life. We're all from completely different situations we've had different upbringings we're all very individual people um, and we all have very individual careers so 
I'm a mechanic. Uh, my best friend, who also does um, breath work, is he's he's a mechanic. Um, a, a lot of other people are, are in marketing, finance. There is no sort of pattern to who needs sort of breath work and who could benefit from breath work. Um, and the the more I do it, and the more people I speak to, the more I realise actually everybody out there has issues of some sort. Um, and the biggest issue is a lot of people aren't even willing to sort of talk about them and don't have a, a way of talking about them. They feel like when they talk to their friends, all they get is, is sympathy. Um, and perhaps their friend will maybe give them a bit of sympathy to start with and then actually talk about themselves when actually they just need, to, they just need somebody to listen and to, to actually acknowledge them. Um, and in Breath for Life, we, we, certainly, we certainly do that. Um, we've helped many people in many situations deal with, with so many different pathologies. Um, it's, it's an absolutely fantastic tool. Um, I'm running low-cost clinics at the moment um, in West Byfleet. Um, I'll certainly put a link on for anybody who's interested afterwards. Um, does anybody have any questions around anything that I've spoken around tonight about fear? Um, is anybody have anything that perhaps they'd like a subject they'd like me to to broach on to? Because um, I'm a chatter. Uh, I love chatting. I'm passionate about what I do. I'm passionate about helping others move forwards in their lives um, and actually stand up and say, "Do you know what?" I, I've had enough. I, I'm, I'm sick of living this this mediocre life, and I want to make a change. How do I do it? Um, so I will chat for ages. So if you do have a, a question that you would like answered, <clears throat> please don't hesitate to it to write it up. Uh, if you feel it's a bit personal, uh, feel free to personal message me afterwards. Certainly wouldn't want anybody to feel as though they have to write a question. Um, if not, I think I'll probably go on to talk about a little bit... Obviously, the subject is fear. Um, but a lot, of, a lot of people would sort of say, well, I, don't un I can understand why you, in, you wouldn't do something because you're, you're scared of, of, of something bad happening. So, for example, this, this Facebook messaging. A lot of people wouldn't put themselves out there. And one of the me sort of small fears I had come up before the talk was, but what if people aren't interested? What if what if people write bad comments? Um, the fifteen twenty reasons. What ifs? Why's? Well, this could happen. That could happen. Um, it, it's completely irrational thoughts. Completely irrational, because a I felt as though I'd done something productive. B the response I got was absolutely fantastic, and and the buzz and the feeling afterwards, knowing that actually I've put myself out there, and by doing that. I could help others do the same and actually make feel others as though they're not alone. Um, we're, we're in this together. Um, and I think a lot of people need to sort of wake up and, and realise that. Um, a very, very good question. I think um, somebody's written, wh wh when is fear useful? Well, if we didn't have fear, we, we wouldn't have the, the option to take a chance. So I think in, in very many ways, if you, if, you can, if you can use fear to push yourself forwards and actually use it as a choice. So am I going to throw myself out of this airplane with a parachute or am I going to sit here and not do it? And it's a very good saying, fuck the fear and do it anyway. Um, and I'm very much a, a believer in that. Um, so I think fear can actually be very useful in our lives. Um, and if we get to know and our own fears and um, then we can certainly sort of move ourselves on and do lots of things that we wouldn't do so I think fear can actually be useful so it's a really good question um, so uh, another good question um, what sort of reactions have you had from others uh, dealing with your emotions um, on a personal level uh, a lot of people are very shocked that uh, a builder and a guy um, is even in touch with his emotions, let alone aware of them and how to work on them. Um, so I think it, it, it's been fantastic reactions. Um, it's actually a lot of my male friends especially. 
um, have stepped up and said, do you know what, it's so refreshing to have a guy turn around and say, do you know what, you can cry. Crying is perfectly natural. If the tears come and you feel sad, cry your eyes out. Give it 100%. At least make it worthwhile. Whatever the emotion is, just because we're supposed to be, and again, it's that supposed to be. We're supposed to be big and hard and tough and everything, and we're men. Yes, of course we can be. But actually, there's a softer side to us as well, and it's perfectly natural to feel emotions. Just because we were born a man, it doesn't mean we don't have emotions. So I think it's the reactions have been fantastic. Um, people are really warming to to the fact that actually they can be honest and you don't have to worry about being honest. Um, who actually cares what anybody else thinks? Because it's not important, really. It's It really has no bearing on your day-to-day -day life unless you allow it to. And again, that's the rational side of fear is we allow ourselves to keep ourselves small because we're worried about what others may say or how we may be judged or anything like that and and this is why I wanted to broach the subject of fear because it's such a such a small thing that we can all learn to use in in a positive way but actually is imprisoning so many people in the world today um, I know there's a lot of people out there that, that you talk about the conspiracies of the world and they'll tell you that oh well we we can't live the lives that we want to because of conspiracies and it's it them just going to have the manifestation that they're visualising. If that's what they believe, and they believe that we're put in fear as a human race and that sort of thing, well then, it's exactly the experience they're going to attract. Um, but if you say, well no, actually that's not right, um, and although there may be some evidence around that, that's not the experience I choose, then you can have a different experience. It's all down to how you feel inside that projects on the outside. Um, so I had a conversation with a, with a friend this week um, and they were discussing about their business. They're going through a lot of stuff with their business and the, the thing that came out with the conversation was they need to take the next step up. So their business is becoming more popular but actually it was, it was going up and very up and down. And what they didn't realise is that they were actually controlling their business. Their business is just a reflection of themselves. So what's going on, what was going on inside him is, going on, is playing out in his business. And it was all around fear. It was the fear of success. Because he's always been, in his family, the, the successful one. And it, it's the pressure of family that's put him in fear that he can't succeed. Because he's worried about the implications. And... He's holding himself back at the end of the day. And we had a brilliant conversation and worked through it and he's made some decisions this week that will change his business and will change his lifestyle and everything around it. And it's just that one decision can make such a big difference. Um, so just mindful of time. If anybody... I'm going to be going for probably another 10 minutes. So if anybody's got any other questions that they want me to answer, um, please let me know. Um, so, for me, I think it's something we, we all need to sort of look into. And it, obviously on a Facebook live chat, it's a little bit difficult for you to, to watch me and actually think about and reflect on how you may be experiencing fear in your life. Um, it can be a very small thing. It can be everything, effectively. Um, and there's no... There's no boundary on how much sort of fear people feel. Some people really just don't don't feel it and get on with it and are, are positive, and other people let it sort of rule their lives. Um, I would say at one point in my life it was certainly certainly ruling. Um, I was scared to sort of scared to move my business forwards, um, scared to do a lot of things. Um, whereas now I've done a lot of work with fear and. There is nothing that's impossible. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, the only thing that makes anything impossible is the me, the you, the I'm. So you've got possible, impossible, impossible. The only difference is two letters, but it's, it's the meaning, so it's the I'm. I'm the only one that can make something impossible in my own life. And I'm the only one that can make something possible. 
it's the action that makes the difference. So it's feel the fear. Allow it in. Ask yourself, what, so what, what is this about? What, what is this feeling? What, what are these feelings around? And it could be, it could go back to childhood stuff. It could go back to stuff you were told at school. So, oh, well, yes, Daniel was very good at this, but he wasn't good at this at school, or he wasn't good at that at school, or he perhaps could be better at that. And actually, we've, we've installed information within somebody, which is just obviously an opinion, but that's created a thought form in their life that has put them into fear and thought, well, I can't do that because, well, people have always said I'm not very good at that, so maybe I won't do that. Well, if we listen to what everybody else says all the time, um, we wouldn't be very, we wouldn't get anything, we wouldn't be happy, we wouldn't get anything we want done. We're just acting out and, and sort of acting on other people's opinions and information. And a lot of the time it isn't even relevant relevant to our own lives um, so um, just going into somebody else has asked um, a question before um, they're, they're happy in their life they've got a great girlfriend good relationship um, everything it, it seems to be all right but then when I when I when I asked them are you 100% happy with everything in your life it gave them the opportunity to own really what's going on um, and I've spoken to a few people that are generally in the same situation. High flyers, um, so earning good money. A um, lot of opportunities they could be sort of having, but due to sort of debt issues and stuff like that, they're sort of controlling their life. And they're earning huge amounts of money. However, they're not living their lives because they're too scared of... of of allowing themselves to live a, live a life. So a lot of them, is, one of them in particular, is putting all their money away and they're too scared to spend it because they're worried about what happens when it's gone. And I said, this is such a, such a small thing that, could, that is obviously affecting your life so, in, in such a big way. One decision um, is stopping you from a couple of holidays a year, treating yourself to that nice car or, or whatever it be. Um, putting a mortgage, getting a mortgage down, whatever it is, we make so many decisions on uh, based on fear and and irrational thoughts. Um, whereas if if you take life by the horns and say, actually, I'm I'm going to go for this, um, more often than not, you get a positive result. Uh, I love a saying: it's if you don't win in life, you learn. And I think it couldn't couldn't be a true true word spoken. Um, there's many situations I've tried things I thought oh, why didn't that work out I really wanted that to work out and this sort of thing and everything like that and, and I actually have hopes and dreams based on those things and it didn't work out well actually if you look hard enough in, in experiences and situations that come up in your life that weren't or you don't see as ne necessarily positive um, it's looking into that and saying well why did that happen what was it what, was there anything that I could have done better um, so we, we use a reflective practice which is really really good and I highly recommend daily reflection if you can just to look into your life and see what was good what was not so good what would, what would you do differently next time and what's the learning and it's real interesting so I've just been distracted by a question um, so uh, just to say, um, it's interesting when we when we make a, a an initial judgment or rationalisation, um, how the stories can start in your mind, um, and the extent of the stories. Um, so, when you when you first have a thought, I could do that. What where where do you go from there? Because you'll have the initial thought, which is, I could do, uh, the, let's say the pros and cons. So once you've weighed up the pros and cons, where, where do the stories go from there? And how deep are they? So what's the extent of your fear and, and the story? Um, so the reflective practice gives you a really good guide of, uh, uh, of how your thought forms are working and, of, and how you're feeling as well. Um, I think it's very important. When you're, when you're reflecting or if you're doing any sort of reflection on my talk later on how, how fear could affect your life is 
not only write down how what what were you thinking, what your thoughts were at the time, but also write how you felt. Because if, if these situations happen in, in your life and they come up and you see them as all, all negative, then you're completely missing the point and missing the gold. Um, in, in a lot of these lessons or negative experiences are, are lessons. And through learning those lessons, we A, learn about ourselves, but learn actually maybe that wasn't right for me. Maybe I wasn't following my passion. Um, because ultimately... Thoughts, or we should make decisions on two things, uh, or decisions are generally made in two things, and one is love and the other is fear. Now, I choose to make all my decisions in love, because that's where the passion is ultimately, that's where our heart sings, that's why I'm doing these talks that I'm doing, this is why I'm doing the, the breath work, because it's made such a huge difference in my life that I want to help others do it, I mean, I, I was sort of so miserable and so down in the dumps and actually the people I was around at the time were exactly the same as me because otherwise I wouldn't have attracted them, they wouldn't have attracted me, we wouldn't have gelled. Um, so I think it's absolutely imperative um, to, to, to follow your passion and to, and to go with that and go, go with a feeling, not with a thought. Um, often you'll find that the thought will be a negative but the feeling can be a positive. Um, and I think it's really, really important that people start to learn how they feel um, and actually realise that that's more important than what we think. Um, what we think is, is just what the brain does. Um, but actually there's another part of us um, which feels. Um, so just mindful, I've only got a few minutes left. Um, so does anybody have any questions they'd like to fire at me quickly? Um, as I said before, if you feel uncomfortable sharing in a live situation um, more than happy to take private messages afterwards um, so yeah I think um, haven't got any questions coming in at the moment um, I think I've covered all the information that I plan to, um, so I'll just go on to talk a little bit, a little bit about my low cost clinic. So, low cost clinics. Um, I'm training as a breath work, breath for life practitioner through Acorn to Oak. Um, the tool we use is Breath for Life. Um, we're doing a couple of low cost clinics um, as part of our training. It gives you the opportunity to try Breath for Life half price. Uh, and also gives me the experience needed to get the certification um, for Breath for Life. Um, it's open to anybody, um, all ages. Um, I recommend it to anybody. Um, like I say, I've worked with many, many people over the years in my personal journey. Um, and one thing that become clear is it's almost like the more people I meet, the more people I realise could do with this sort of stuff. Um, and people do need to sort of step up and actually by, for want of a better word grab life by the bollocks and go for it um, because that's where you'll be able to change your life and that's what my clinic's all about um, so what I'm going to do is I'll put a link up um, afterwards um, on the same page as this so if you'd like to sign in or if you know anybody that may be interested um, please don't hesitate to let them know and uh, they can get in touch Brilliant. Well, I think that's about all for this evening. Thank you very much for all your questions. Thank you very much for the messages of support. Um, I hope you all have a fantastic evening and I'll see you all in two weeks. Thank you very much. Take care.